the Dogtown Boys, they were just doing it because they enjoyed it and they were outcasts. But the Zephyr skating team went on to create modern skating culture. They took skateboarding to the ground and off the ground on a half pipes to the skating style that we know today. So we were previously talking about tribes and how people can bind together over common beliefs and values and the characteristics that happen when people get together and influence everybody else. It's because a lot of things that we take for granted that we think are common started with a very small group of people. And skateboarding is one example. The culture of skateboarding originated in the 70s with the Zephyr skateboarding team in the area of Dogtown. And there's a fascinating documentary called Dogtown and Z-Boys, which depicts this. It was a group of struggling kids. You know, they weren't wealthy. They would go surfing in the mornings. And when it hit 10 a.m., they needed something else to do, something to, to continue to bond together and spend time together. They basically put wheels on the surfboard and started skateboarding. So there was five elementary schools nearby, and each of them were in a sloped area. So they could take the skateboards onto the concrete, and they could go around, and they could get down on the ground and basically try to surf on the skateboard. Even when they were surfing, there were certain characteristics of tribes that they demonstrated. So, for example, they were very against outsiders. You had to sort of be connected with the group psychologically, and you also had to have a certain style. And this continued when they went out and skated within public. They put a big emphasis on the style of different skaters. And so you actually had to have a pleasing aesthetic. And that's why skateboarding was an art form. And having that style meant that you were part of the club. So you had to sort of behave in a certain way to belong and to fit in. And because of the drought that started happening in California, they started skating in swimming pools that were empty. So they'd go around looking for houses for sale with these empty swimming pools. And, you know, when they first started that, they didn't know what to do. They had to invent how to skate in a swimming pool. So the first day, they would go up along the sides and maybe reach the light. The second day, they would discover new tricks. The next day, they might actually go outside the pool and touch their hand against the skateboard, which was a common thing in surfing. And, you know, it wasn't really planned. It was something that just happened. It emerged from them interacting with each other and watching each other and being creative about what what you can do with the space. With these empty swimming pools, they basically figured out how they could make it useful for them and for their art form. They took ruins and they made art out of it. And they existed within their own bubble. And one feature that helped make this bubble cohesive was Craig Stysick in the Dogtown Chronicles. So within his Dogtown Chronicles newspaper, he laid out the symbols, images, the values, and the ideas of that group within photos and articles. And he distributed them to that group and to the neighboring community. And this is one thing that you can do to help bring people together and help form a tribe, is to generate a local newspaper that is seen by people that fit within that group. And if you highlight the people within that community, that's the type of thing that's going to get them engaged with that newspaper and connect them together cohesively and create culture. So even though newspaper isn't really a popular form today, there are some local newspapers that appreciate that if you focus on that local population, those local people will be very interested. When the newspaper is featuring featuring your neighbor and when it has featured you and what's going on in your local community, then it's very relevant to people and it can stay interesting even in today's society where social media and online things are so prominent. In 1975, they went to compete in a Bain skateboard competition, and they wore a uniform. They wore these navy blue Zephyr shirts. And 
Wearing a uniform demonstrates cohesiveness because you have to have people on the same page. They have to be connected psychologically with each other to agree to dress the same way. And in some sense, we see this in other places too, like wearing the suit and tie to work. If you agree to wear a suit and tie like everybody else within a certain work community, then you acknowledge that you're going to agree to certain norms and certain viewpoints that you need to have to be successful within that community. Community. Another thing the Dogtown Boys had is they had a shop. So they would go and congregate at the skateboard shop, and this was a physical place where they could run into people. And that shop helped to provide an identity. And in many ways, shops have historically provided this benefit to society. There were, there's many cases where people would go and hang out in, you know, guitar stores, music stores, to run into people and see what was going on and socialize and be connected. So in 19, at the 1975 Bain Skateboard Competition, the Zephyr team stood out from all the other teams participating. Remember, at this time, they were basically their own bubble, creating their own skateboard culture. And all the other teams had a completely different style. They all stood straight up on the skateboards. They didn't think about their style and aesthetic. The Zephyr team, because they were influenced by surfing, was down low to the ground when they skateboarded. They would touch the ground and turn, and they invented the half pipe because they were used to swimming pools. So when they went to the competition, they basically introduced the modern-day style of skateboarding that we're used to. And some of them were able to make some money based on the attention and influence that originated with them. And that's sort of just a testament to what happens when you create something that nobody else is doing. You can get people's interests, and then now that they, your attention is on them, you can sponsor different products, you can appear in TV shows, and things like that. Uh, let me know if you know of any other groups that started out small that made these big changes within society let me know in the comments. And um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe because we're going to be posting regularly on psychological ideas and hit the bell button for notifications and hit the like and the share if you like this video and if you want to share it. Thanks for checking this out.